At the start of the movie, Lieutenant Eugene Irwin gives a speech about castles, describing their key features. However, the castle in the story is actually a high-security military prison run by Colonel Ed. Irwin is transferred to the prison during winter, after being sentenced to 10 years in prison. The other inmates are curious about how long he will last, and some consider his treatment to be cruel. During check-in, Irwin has all of his possessions taken away except for family photos and his academy ring. When greeted by Winter, Irwin only hopes to serve his sentence and return home. Captain Parrott shows Winter's war collection to Lieutenant Irwin while Winter goes to get a book for Irwin to sign. Irwin comments that someone with such a collection has never been in battle, causing Winter to lose admiration for Irwin. Irwin witnesses the inmates being rowdy at bedtime and getting insults and threats. The next day, there is a fight in the basketball area with inmate Sam Yates acting as a bookie. Despite the lack of concern from the guards, Winter sounds the alarm when Thumper gets assistance in the fight, and Thumper is shot by a guard from a distance. Shortly after, Irwin witnesses Bray abusing Ramona, who stutters while working on a rock wall for Winter. During lunch, Irwin meets Dr. Lee Barnard, an old colleague from the Gulf who is now in prison for drug possession. Thumper appears and reveals that he was shot with a rubber bullet, and an opponent claims that Winter manipulates the prisoners for entertainment. Irwin compares the prison to a war zone and just wants to serve his sentence in peace. Yates, a former officer, visits Irwin and mentions their connection. Irwin's daughter visits him during his visiting hours, but he is late. During his visiting hours, Irwin has a difficult conversation with his daughter about his absence during her childhood, but they agree to write to each other. Irwin meets Aguilar, a former Marine corporal who made a mistake and is now imprisoned. Winter sees Irwin saluting Aguilar and orders Peretz to reprimand him, leaving him beaten by guards. Winter decides to punish Irwin the next day by sending him to work in the sun. The inmates bet with Yates, and Barnard tells Irwin he can remove his shirt revealing scars from electric shocks. Irwin stumbles and hits his head while carrying the last rock, but finishes the task. Parrot forces him to restack the pile and later moves him to solitary confinement. Winter visits him and justifies the punishment. Upon returning to his cell, the inmates greet Irwin. Yates brings him a haul of cigarettes that he won on a bet. Irwin tells Aguilar to take the cigarettes since he doesn't smoke and asks Yates about a recurring bet on his suicide. Yates tells him about his father's admiration for Irwin's leadership in Hanoi, but Irwin admits to breaking down once. Back at the camp, Irwin encourages the prisoners not to be intimidated by the rock project, and they decide to tear down the wall. They rebuild it with the guidance of Aguilar's father and work together, seeing Irwin as their leader, resulting in a better wall than before. The prisoners allow Aguilar to carve his name on a rock as a memento for his contribution to the wall. Winter believes that Irwin's camaraderie is a strategy to build an army and creates a code among the prisoners to communicate secretly. Winter sends a bulldozer to destroy the wall, but Aguilar stops it and is fatally shot by a rubber bullet. Irwin orders the prisoners to line up like soldiers to hear his farewell to Aguilar. Winter interrupts with an early alarm, and the prisoners salute Irwin from their cells. Winter visits Irwin and expresses grief over Aguilar's death but Irwin doesn't believe him and demands his resignation. Brigadier General Jim Wheeler visits Irwin, requested by Winter to corroborate stories. Winter receives a letter from Irwin threatening to kidnap Wheeler if he doesn't resign. Wheeler tells Irwin that he has already exonerated Winter three times. Winter initiates a pre-write operation to protect Wheeler, but it becomes excessive, and he orders it to stop. Wheeler criticizes Winter for fearing an inmate's ability to kidnap him, and offers to transfer Irwin to another prison. Winter refuses out of pride. Winter tells the inmates about Irwin's violation of a presidential order and the execution of eight soldiers. Winter books the convicts who colluded with Irwin. Irwin reveals that the letter was a bluff to understand the riot squad's methods. Winter tries to make a deal with Yates to reduce his sentence. Two of Irwin's colleagues fake a fight with the guards during lunch to let the inmates prepare their strategy. Irwin trains the inmates to attack and raise the flag upside down in front of General Wheeler. Irwin confronts Yates about his deal with Winter and questions his loyalty. Yates informs Winter, and another inmate calls him a rat. Yates asks for his release and promises to bring more information. Irwin receives a letter from Rosalie with a photo of her grandson. 
Winter calls Yates for more information about Irwin's plan to raise the flag upside down. Yates reveals that they have his own flag. Winter sends guards to find the missing flag, but realizes it's a distraction. Inmates block the exits and restrain the few outside guards. They release the isolated inmates, including Yates. They begin a counterattack with materials hidden inside the rock wall. Irwin communicates with Winter via walkie-talkie and expresses his intention to take over the prison. The inmates use a catapult to attack Winter's office, destroying part of it and setting it on fire. Bohr engages the guards on the run, and the inmates cut off the water supply of the water cannon. They fight the guards with the help of the anti-riot vehicle acquired from the guards. Yates gets on a helicopter, confronts the guard who killed Aguilar, and takes out the gun despite being shot. After the helicopter crash and battle, the inmates gather to greet a furious Winter who threatens to shoot them. Only Irwin refuses to comply with Winter's request to give him the flag. Winter orders to open fire, but the shooters refuse to do so. Frustrated, Winter shoots Irwin and is arrested by Peretz. Despite being shot, Irwin raised the flag correctly and is saluted in his honor. The movie ends with a tribute to the fallen prisoners, including Ramon, Aguilar, and Eugene Irwin. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. Thank you for watching.